Hello, this is commentary for the 3251 Any% percent All Stages Contra Shattered Soldier speedrun. Okay, let me turn up the sound there. And then, uh, so for the very beginning of the run, we do actually, you can actually pick the stage order. We pick stage one for SDA timing, because there's about 20 seconds before you gain control of your character, which is where SDA timing starts. And uh, one of the first things you'll notice right away is there's this, on the top left, there's three weapons you can use. There's actually no, um, there's no pickups in this game compared to other Contra games. You actually start with the three weapons that you, at the very beginning, and you use them throughout the whole time. There's no one-up pickups or invincibility or anything, so. And you'll notice I switched immediately to the fire. The charge fire is a very, very, very strong weapon. Because these, you get three weapons and you get their three charged variations. So with the charge fire, you'll notice right away it uh, actually, just like other the other two charge shots, you have to wait a bit till it actually gets fully charged. If you don't fully charge it, you get that little lemon thing, and that doesn't do as much damage. And there's a the charge remote mine. Yeah, but the bulk majority of this run is actually a the charge fire. It kind of has a narrow uh, pathway, so it's not good everywhere, but for the, a lot of parts, it's the strongest weapon. Now, the uh, objective of this mini boss is to kill the middle part with those blue things hanging off, but uh, for any percent all stages, we have to actually maintain a certain hit rate. And in this case, we kill a little extra stuff to get the hit rate up. There's a flamethrower, two flamethrower turrets at the end we skip, because those take too long for what they're worth, unless I died. If I die, then I actually, at the very end of the stage, you lose 2% of your hit rate, and you need to be at 85% at the end of the stage. So if you don't take any deaths and you do this right I'm doing now, you'll get 86%. 85% is the minimum for A rank, which is what's needed for the first five stages to unlock the two last stages, which are pretty neat. And then we use charge machine gun here, because uh, these guys take a little bit to spawn and you can do damage just as they're coming out that way. And this one will use regular fire on this mini boss, this form guy. Because it actually, uh, it'll hit all his scales when we do it this way. And we bait him to the left here, and then to the right. And we get in the next phase, we do charge fire and regular fire. Because the charge fire doesn't have enough time to do two per cycle unless you're really quick. And then for this part, uh, it's kind of random. There's like one of the few random parts of the game outside of a few bosses. Uh, these flies can grab you. So the strategy I use is to kind of jump and hit what's in front of me and kind of just hope the other guys behind me don't grab me because it wastes a bit of time. And then here's the first actual stage boss. You'll notice there's a lot of mini bosses and bosses in this game going on. So uh, a turtle from uh, Contra 3, if anybody's familiar with that. It does not do the turtle humps. It does uh, some purple ball and shoots flies from its pod. So you only have to kill the head unless... If you want to kill those pods, you can for extra hit rate in case you died. And then uh, what's different from Contra 3 is this butt has a face. Looks like pepperoni. Okay, that's the bad, uh, that's the bad pattern right there. So what he does is he'll either start with the bad pattern where he doesn't open his mouth, or he can start with this pattern. He'll always do this pattern right after the other one, if he didn't get it the first time. And you can actually get a one cycle on this if you're really quick like that. That's actually pretty hard to get. Because you have to be really spot on with the charge shots. That's where a good deal of the optimizations come from, is getting the charge shots quickly. Because as soon as you release a charge shot, you immediately have to hold it down again to get it charged up. As you would imagine. And that's actually easier said than done, because it's really hard to get the... to optimize charge shots if you screw up just one of them. And then going forward, we have stage two, which is the auto scroll stage for a lot of it. So donation readings here, if you got them. And then some of the mechanics of this game is uh, 
I should mention that the charge fire, even though it does the most damage overall for a lot of bosses and enemies, there will be some parts where the uh, hitbox is kind of small on enemies and it won't do as much damage because it will not tick as much. And it, in some cases like that we'll use either uh, remote mine or we'll use regular fire. Regular fire is usually the second best weapon. Regular fire actually tick. It doesn't matter how big their hitbox is or not. It always does the same damage. Charge fire. It matters how big their hitbox is. There are two exceptions that I'm aware of. I'll get to that when we get there. And then yeah, just the main part of this stage is to. I mean, the main goal of this stage is to make sure you just get the hit rate up. It's pretty easy to get the hundred percent hit rate. This is probably the easiest of the seven stages. There's gonna be seven stages total. So this is also a little mini boss from Contra 3 is the helicopter thing. It's just kind of variation of it. So you notice I take a death there. Those are actually purposeful deaths. Now you're probably wondering why am I taking deaths there? Am I just like messing around? Well I kind of am but there's actually later on I want to lower my life count for a game over abuse later on. There will be a point in the game where a game over is actually faster to uh, abuse a checkpoint. Okay, that turret takes three hit, three or four hits, depending on your positioning. So, and this is the spot to take deaths, by the way, because uh, it doesn't really waste time on certain areas if you take deaths. But also, another thing I want to keep in, you guys want to keep in mind, like I said earlier, is the hit rate has to be a certain percentage, and this is the stage to do it because not only well, am I going to get a hundred percent hit rate from killing the enemies, I'm actually going to not. I'm going to actually have a lot of deaths, and they're not going to waste time, so this is the perfect stage to lose most of the lives at. Each uh, life that you lose, you lose 2% hit rate at the very end, So, uh, and game over is 10%. However, if you game over after a lot of deaths, you'll only get that 10% from a game over. And we do need to hit 85% or above on all the stages, otherwise we do not unlock all stages. So it sounds like it's pretty a uh, pretty harsh requirement, but uh, it's really not too bad, especially if you need to kill extra. There's backup strats to kill extra on every stage. You just kind of have to be aware of it, and I do kill extra for marathon safety. What's great about the hit rate is you can, a lot of the enemies that you do need hit rate for backup, you can actually get them towards the end of the stage, in case I did need to get them. And then these guys, we do one charge fire. The flame is actually, the regular flame is stronger on them, but as they're spawning, we throw one charge flame just to get that brief damage going. You'll see that on, a, on some enemies that briefly spawn. We actually uh, charge up a, a charge flame and then do regular flame depending on how big their hitbox is. It really depends on the enemy for what the most optimal thing is. And then you spawn two turrets here. They take about three charge fires each. They kind of move around so they're easy to miss. And then generally with my route I get a one up there from the score. And if you kill those two turrets too fast, actually, you get a bad pattern here. This guy can actually shoot electric balls, which is his other pattern. If you're too slow or way too fast on the turret, you'll shoot the electric balls. If not, he does this uh, little laser fire thing, and that's the faster thing. And then you just one charge fire there, and there we go. And now here's the only uh, real platforming segment of the game. It's the very end of the stage. You can actually do this part without stopping your movement at all. It's kind of hard, but um, it's not too bad if you don't. You just gotta watch out for these rocket guys or whatever there. So I'm gonna wait right there. I want to shoot that turret at the very end if, if possible, because I lose control of my character there, and uh, it's a little less movement if you try to finish it right at the end of there. Okay, so you get a robot guy. He's the boss. He's kind of cool looking. He's uh, 
just chasing you down. So for the first part of this fight, he has two shoulder pads, one on each side. They take about four charge shots. And then I actually use the lemons there just to make it a little faster. The lemons are if you if you release a charge shot too early. So I take another death there because that doesn't waste time once I kill the two shoulder pads. That was actually a really good pattern. That's a really hard pattern to get. When he's on the left side and you're shooting the shoulder pad, then yeah, that's... If he only bumps twice, then that's actually pretty good. Okay, and I know a lot of casual players like to shoot their remote mines here, but all you have to do here is just shoot one charge fire. And it's a lot faster. And he drops down, and he uh, becomes a plane. But that doesn't matter because he just sits down anyway. And then you gotta watch out for his roller skate blade things. And you just shoot him a charge fire here. Do you notice a lot of bosses have either different phases or different... Just different mini bosses back to back. There's a lot of that in this game. Now in this case, the hitbox is really small, so the charge fire doesn't take as much damage. We use regular flame there instead, and that does kill it faster. And you'll notice I got 100% hit rate, and then the deaths do to still add to 92% there in that case. So like I said, 86% or higher, or oh, I'm sorry, 85% or higher to get uh, A rank, which is needed for all stages. And then you get dogs. This part's kind of difficult. It really there's a little bit of luck involved with the how you get the spawns here. If you want to do this part without stopping your movement, you have to. It's faster to kill these sandbags here for hit rate. I should mention that uh, for the hit rate, it's all the non-respawnable enemies. So any enemies that respawn, they will not give you hit rate. If they continually respawn, they will not give you hit rate because you could just abuse it that way. Anything that you kill once and it's gone, then that's what gives you hit rate. And some obstacles count towards that. That's not the best pattern. I actually came up too close to the drone there, so he did another face. That's also another Contra 3 boss, if anybody's familiar with that. Okay, so these these turrets. Those are also from Contra 3. There's a lot of Contra references from other games. And then you got this uh, ceiling guy. This is actually the reason we want a low life count. I actually found that there's a uh, game over abuse you can do on this boss. If you if you game over as soon as he's defeated you skip his death animation and this boss's death animation is like 20 seconds long so it does it saves a significant amount of time if you do the game over abuse for all stages. And then uh, you'll notice I'm up top so I get more damage with the charge fire there. And in this case, I'll take a death, another death, because I do want to be a low lives. Another death. And like I said, the more, the longer the charge fire goes through, the more it takes for. And then there's your, there's the game over abuse. It's really, really, really neat to do that. Okay, then we have the uh, dragon-looking thing, wyvern or whatever it is. He can do two main patterns. He'll do the bubbles, which is the bad pattern. Either, there's several ways to do that, but I use a uh, regular flame to get rid of them. I stay in the top left here of the ledge, and I shoot regular flame. Okay, that was good enough. And the other pattern he's about to do is he pukes upwards. He actually hits the left ledge. You can either jump on the top left above, or you can stand on the right ledge. Nope, oh, gonna hit that guy. Uh, please hit him. There we go. Ah! <laughs> Okay, now here's one of the few, I think, one of two times we use the remote lines, if I can, if I recall. This is another auto-scroll part, so there's not too much to speed up here. As long as you get the hit rate, you're fine. Now, I should mention on the hit rate, when you game over, that's uh, 10%. And any deaths I took before that game over does not count towards the hit rate. It's only... The priority it takes is the game over first, and then any lives you lose after that do count towards hit rate. So I want to make sure I do not take two extra deaths at this point, otherwise I will not get all stages. 
I have leeway. No, I, I, I'm sorry. I have leeway space for two extra deaths. And if I take three, then I do not get all stages. And this boss is pretty easy, so it's not a big deal. This part's pretty auto scroll, and you can kind of shoot things in advance, and it doesn't really speed it up, but it's kind of nice. So the things you got to hit are the rockets that come from left to right. Those give hit rate. Nothing too crazy here. You can shoot them with pretty much anything and they'll get hit. There's four of those, uh, those pods I destroyed and then just a few more rockets. I should hit 90% uh, at the end of this. You actually do get a 100% hit rate. Minus the uh, game over. Then the game over is 10%, so we'll still hit the 86 or about. And one, two. You can actually get three charge shots before you duck there. And then my strat is to do another three charge shots and then regular flame. As I found really useful. You can get this thing in two cycles, but it's really, 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 really tight. Yeah, I usually get them in two and a half around. I should also mention the charged remote mine is actually a homing weapon. Just in case anyone was curious. Okay, so you get a cutscene there, and then you go to stage stage four. I think that's the next stage. Stage four is pretty brutal as far as optimizing. It's not the hardest stage to beat, but it is very, very brutal for getting quickly because there's a lot of parts that if you don't get quick kills it slows things down a lot so right here you can um, there's several ways to do this part you can either remote mine charge or use regular machine gun I like to use remote mine charge and just stay towards the center kind of and then you'll get 18% hit rate from this part the segment right here and we switch to flame in my opinion, this boss coming up is the hardest to optimize because it's very, 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 very tight to get a quick kill. We call him the Jet Ski Boss, or Dr. Robotnik, whatever you want to call him. So there's three parts you can hit on this boss. The backpack, the gun, and the pod in front. So if you die once here, it's actually really hard like that. Not like I died there. It's yeah, I cannot get the quick kill now. But I can get a... There's a backup, actually. I just want to make sure I get the backpack here, at least. There's a much better way to do that. But uh, we'll save that for later. So the backup strat is to do the pod second. And that wastes about 8 seconds if you do it this way. The gun second is the uh, most optimal strat. And you have to kill the pod third. It's kind of hard to explain unless you see it. But uh, if you're if you're really really quick on killing all of them, and you get gun second, you can you can open the core quicker. The core is what um, is how you damage the boss itself. You'd actually skip a missile phase if you got gun second and killed the pod right away after that. So here's the core. That's what, like I said, what kills the boss. So we use a charge flame and a regular flame here. And then the second time the core opens up, you have to wait for a whip, and you have to wait for another missile cycle. So you can kind of just stay nearby and hold L2 and just stand in place, or R2 I mean. And then it takes two uh, open ups to destroy the core. And since it does have a small hitbox, the regular flame is better there. But we have one charge flame ready to go just to kind of initiate damage right away. Yeah, a lot of people have trouble with that boss, and it's because of the missiles. But uh, it's not way too bad if you do pod second. It's a good uh, marathon safety strat, I have to say. And then you want to... Uh, you can either use the machine gun here, or you can use the... Um, Charge remote mine, I think, are the two best weapons here. Charge remote mine kind of just homes in on everything, so it's pretty easy. A lot of people call this the uh, the Battletoads level two stage, 
the Wookiee hole. Because it's kind of like, it has the same thing as a, uh, you glide down in a little helicopter thing. A little copter coming down. And then shoot these plants. So the plants and the pods are all hit rate. Come towards hit rate, rather. And then there's a weird thing with the screen scrolling here. I want to be right around this area. And the way it works out is the next boss will spawn quicker if I drop down from that x-axis area. Okay, so another, here's another important quick kill is the uh, brain or head or whatever you call it. Every time I hit it with a charge fire, it slows down briefly and that is absolute key. Oh, I screwed it up. Uh, recovered? Okay, whatever. It's actually pretty tight on this one too. Uh, to get the quick kill, but the quick kill is getting those uh, the outer layer quicker. If I did not get that outer, outer layer quick enough, I would actually not get this brain phase and I would waste about 15 seconds waiting for another cycle. So that is the quick kill there. And then I wait for the screen to scroll a little bit and then kill the pods along the way. There's actually a lot of leeway space for a percentage here, so I'm not worried about that. Just kind of do this with minimal stopping if you can. And then we get to the boss, which is the seaman, fishman looking guy thing. I don't really know what he is, but whatever. Anyway, he breaks on the glass and then you're flooded up. And then we use remote charge mine here too. You, you've seen a pattern here where we just use uh, charge remote mine and charge fire a lot. That's a lot of the game. In this case, it's for these little helicopter mines that are coming down. Okay, so you can jump shot him right here, you get another shot, oh, I didn't get it, you get another shot as he's falling too. And now the, this is one of the worst bosses to screw up the quick kill. You cannot hit him here, you can only hit him at the first jump and the next phase. So the first and third phase you can hit him at. So this one you just have to wait out until he's hittable. If you screw up the quick kill, you lose about 50 seconds around, like 45 to 50 seconds. It is not desirable at all. So right here you want to shoot charge fire. If you kind of take your time a little bit to make sure the charge fires get in, then you'll be okay. I actually screwed it up there, but it gives you one last chance to hit him. If you do not get the hit here, you lose that. You lose about 45 seconds. So I got it there, luckily. That is the single most time-consuming quick kill you can miss, if you do miss it. And then that's it. That's stage 4. So for the stage selection, it lets you pick stage 1 through 4. And then once you do stage 1 through 4, you get to pick stage 5. It doesn't allow you to pick stage 5 right away at the very beginning. If ever you wanted to change up your stage order. Stage 5 is the Archipelago, the Contra Classic stage. There's going to be a lot of Contra references from the other games. So we're going to kill the sandbags here, very important. And then you can switch to, oh, well, okay, that wasn't good. You want to switch to either Remote Mine or Charged, uh, Charged Flame. And then my favorite boss, the Truck Snail, all hail the Truck Snail, all hail the Truck Snail. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now he does one of two patterns. He can shoot these missiles, which you get out of the way. That's the bad pattern. Or he can do bubbles. If he does bubbles, he gets some more time on him to hit him. The regular fire is slightly, slightly faster. I got out too bad. Oh, man. That's not a good pattern at all. Okay. I was trying to get the quicker kill, but not even that would allow me. So the truck snail. One more shot? Two more shots? Yeah, one more shot. Okay, so two deaths. That was a bad truck snail. Okay, then we go across here, and this one's kind of scary, but I have a way to do this for you. You can actually get hit by those propeller blades, so you gotta make sure you do not hit them too fast as you're crossing by. And then the classic Contra Tower thing, whatever you call it. And then for hit rate, I do want to kill the top three guys. Those are those guys do not respawn after you kill the three. And then we actually fight uh, Lance Bean. Uh, you're probably wondering why you fight Lance Bean. I have no idea about the story of this game, so don't ask me. He's 
In case anybody's curious, he is actually a playable character in the other Contra games. I don't know why he's an enemy in this game. I still haven't figured that out. But, uh, when he throws these snowballs, that's a good pattern right there. That gives you the most hit time there. He's actually the most random with his patterns, so if he gives you bad patterns, it does take a while to defeat him. Oh, he was about to do a bad pattern there. You're gonna stay on the left so you walk less, and then you fight the heart. Okay. And then you two kill the two pods for hit rate, and then everything after this point will get the rest of the hit rate until the final boss of the stage. So this is, at this point onwards, from land speed onwards, we fight just, uh, it's just one long boss rush. <laughs> Bosses back to back, as far as the eye can see. And then this is the boss, if you've seen the movie Tremors, it kind of looks like that. That worm. And then you get the Super Sieve boss. The two of them, actually, in this case. The most optimal pattern is to, uh... Kill the bottom one on one cycle. It didn't allow me to do it there. And then wait for the other one to shoot stars is the most optimal pattern, but he doesn't always allow you to do that. Even then, it's not too bad. You just want to make sure when I do my charge flames here that they hit the most area possible. So that's why you see me ducking if it's on the ground. Just so I could cover more area with my charge fire. There's a stars pattern. I can finish him here, I think. And there we go. Because that gives you the most hit time if he does the stars pattern. Now this one's another weird one. Uh, we do a charge flame to initiate the shot. And since it has such a small hitbox, we use regular flame. To do the most optimal damage. And we gotta drop down here. And you can kill him right there. That's the quick kill right there. It's not too hard to get that quick kill. But you gotta be on the ball with the charge flame. So if I had died at any point with this route, I would actually have to kill extra things for hit rate. Which I'm going to do now. So the things you can kill for hit rate are the eyes. Oh, I died again. The eyes give 3% each, and the arms give 4% each. So there's a lot of leeway space for deaths in this stage. So just to make sure I get it, I actually just use a machine gun to make sure I don't kill the, the head part quicker. Or, oh, never mind, I got it. I'm done. Because that's 6% total and I took 3 deaths. Okay, that should be 86% barely, okay. But yeah, the backup strat is to kill the arms. And if you have gotten A rank total, 85% or higher throughout those first 5 stages, you get the next 2 stages. Which is also a huge boss rush from this point out. So these... This level and the next one are the only two unlockable ones. If you did any percent, you would only do those first five stages without worrying about hit rate. Here's one of the less scary parts, is this part, because he shoots missiles at the top here. This is a pretty scary part if you want to do optimal. Uh, the regular flame is a little faster there. And it's kind of scary because those missiles can come out of nowhere when you're trying to shoot straight up. And then you get the next uh, part of the Hello Robo guy. Heli Robo. Oh, oh, well, that was not good. Yeah, yeah, deaths don't matter too much at this point. Because you'll generally get the. Uh, the oh, I missed a shot there. You can get the quick kill if you kill him there. On that face. I think he's only got like one or two shots left anyway. And there we go. Oops. So there's five more bosses in this stage. There's like some story of the, these three guys that are trying to start a new world or something and they morph into these different DNA things. I don't know what they're supposed to be. Okay, this guy shoots balls. He has two balls here and then you want to uh, just dodge them. You want to dodge him like right at the last second as he's as the balls are coming towards you, and then he has these spike patterns. Ooh, that was a pretty good kill.
Okay, and then the next part is the frog. Now, the frog is very deceptive in his hitbox because uh, even though he has a big hitbox, the charged fire does not do as much as the regular flame. He's one of the exceptions. So we get back from his, to stay away from his puke. And then we go up close with the Q-tips. That way the regular flame hits right there. And there's the quick kill for him. Otherwise the charge fire actually takes roughly twice as long to kill him. And you get, an, you get a really long phase if you do not kill him there. Okay, next is a jellyfish. Jellyfish is a pretty cool boss because uh, there's always an opportunity to hit him no matter what. It just depends on how good you are at dodging some of these mushrooms. Whenever you hit these mushrooms, they drop straight down whenever you destroy them. And it uh, just one big dodge phase as well, just trying to get the shots in too. That was a good kill. Okay, next we got the uh, bubble. Now, a lot of people have trouble with the bubble. I know that rhymes, whatever. But, uh... There's a really, really, really easy strat to do the bubble, and that's Machine Gun. This is probably the only boss where you use Machine Gun, and it's really effective. Just regular Machine Gun, that is. Even though those look like those spike balls will hit you, they will not, if you're at the very bottom left or bottom right. And now, one of the recent additions, towards the end of last year, we found, is to uh, use a remote mine on this sperm boss coming up. Now what Remote Mine does is it has a blast radius I didn't mention and for some reason that does a lot more damage to this boss than any of the regular flame or charge flame. And they get a really quick kill there. Okay and then once you finish this stage you go to the final stage with, and the final stage is only one boss. It's a kind of a combination of all the bosses we just fought right now. It doesn't do nearly as many as attacks. And by combination, I literally mean he just combined himself into one creature looking thing. So basically, the, for this fight, just charge fire, spam the whole time. So he throws balls, and there's a good visual cue for it. You can actually stand right where the first ball lands and then just duck right next to it and you'll always dodge him. Okay, now you can do one of two flame patterns here. That's the straight fire so you want to jump in between those and then jump again to dodge them. Another one is to he'll throw those four fires on the ground of the plane and then uh, should kill him right around here. Yep, he didn't even get a chance to do anything else. And that's it. Uh, at this point onwards, it's just, uh, you don't even have to damage him, he'll just die on his own. And that is it for, uh, Contra, Shattered Soldier, any percent all stages. Hope you guys enjoyed. And timer stops as soon as you lose control there. When the plane takes off. And then you get the, um, you get the second best ending here. And uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, guys.